Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So we were uh, looking at uh, sound propagation in a box or acoustic field in a box and we derived the expression for the uh, <coughs> solution for the uh, acoustic field and now we are uh, looking at uh, the relation between the uh, wave numbers. So we had the wave numbers kx, ky and kz um, and these are not independent things they are uh, expressed in terms of k0 as kx squared plus ky squared plus kz squared equal to k0 squared. And so, if you write the solution in terms of the modes, and uh, then the relation turns out that you can express kz in terms of the ky and kx as uh, follows. Uh, it's become it becomes square root of k naught squared minus m pi over b squared minus n pi over h squared per half. And uh, so, there is a square root over this quantity, which is this power half but this is some quantity minus some other quantity and if you notice this m pi over b the whole square and n pi over s the whole square they are positive numbers. So there is a, a quite a bit of possibility that the second and third term together can overwhelm k0. So in that case uh, you will get a real solution only when uh, k0 squared is greater than these two quantities if not you will get a imaginary solution and then we will examine what is the consequence of that. So so this would give uh, uh, real roots for k z comma m comma n and uh, that would mean that you will have this uh, propagating solution of the form e power i k z and e power minus i k z. Now if this quantity becomes imaginary then you would not get that kind of form because i times i. So if you think of this quantity as imaginary let us say i alpha so e power i times i alpha will become e power minus alpha. So you do not get this propagating kind of solution but you will get attenuated solutions. So uh, you get propagating solution or in other words any mode will propagate only if this condition is true that is k0 squared minus m pi over b the whole squared minus n pi over h squared is greater than 0. So if you write rewrite this in terms of frequencies you will get 2 pi f over c squared minus m pi over b squared minus n pi over h squared greater than 0 or we can uh, alternately rewrite this as uh, noting that uh, f lambda equal to c. So you will get 4 over lambda squared minus m over b squared minus n over h squared is greater than 0. This can be recast as this will happen if lambda should be less than 2 over m over b squared plus n over h, h squared. <coughs> so your wavelength has to be shorter than certain value for a mode to be established and <coughs> that mode to propagate. If not the mode will <coughs> attenuate rapidly and you cannot establish that mode <coughs> in the duct. It will only be present locally where you set up the sound source. Sorry. Oh yeah, thank you. Yeah. <coughs> so <coughs> if your lambda is uh, only the lambda is small or the frequency is higher than the cutoff value, uh, you would be able to establish the wave in the duct. If not, uh, this would not get established it will only be present locally. So uh, uh, if uh, otherwise plane waves should have 
no problem because if you have m and n as 0, if you take m and n as 0, this inequality will always be satisfied. So, there will be no problem with plane wave, but if you have <coughs> non plane waves uh, with this mode numbers m and n, you have to have this condition satisfied. Okay. <coughs> now, if you think of um, h is greater than b, I mean if I just pick it that way, the first higher mode will be zero comma one that is uh, <coughs> so you should get lambda less than two h or f is greater than c by two h. So if you do not satisfy this relation, um, you will not be able to set up this higher modes in the duct. Okay. I mean you can the the those modes will be very local and the amplitude will decay exponentially. Is this okay? Any uh, questions? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So do you think like K Z M and it it matches a lot if that is some plus i something or minus i? Uh, you can um, choose. I mean, both are possible, but it is. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, if you so you have to pick which 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 one is there so for the left running wave you will have to pick the solution such that the solution decays to the left for the right running wave you have to pick the solution such that the solution decays to the right so that would be a physical way of choosing it in any case i mean if you have an amplitude at some place you set up it will decay rather than grow i mean that's not physical to have it grow any other question yes Yeah, so uh, if you have, uh, if you look at this expression, you have to have frequencies higher than certain value. All I done is I replaced f over uh, f over c with lambda and rewrote this this way. So either your frequency has to be beyond some value, or wavelength has to be below certain value. I mean, they have inverse relationship for this relation to be satisfied. And only if this relation is satisfied, you will be able to get a real value of uh, k z, which would only be then uh, make it possible to have propagating waves. Otherwise, uh, this uh, KZ would be imaginary, and then you will have attenuated solution. So you'll have only a local. Uh, uh, locally, you can establish the higher modes, but it won't stay in the duct for long, for higher distance. Is it clear? Anything else? I will just pause for a minute for everyone to write these things down. So, when the K Z is imaginary, you said DK would happen. Yeah. Is the decay for the amplitude or the frequency? For the uh, for the amp. Yeah. I mean that, that's that's what the uh, complex wave number means. Complex wave number means it will the amplitude will decay. The frequency has a periodic part and non periodic part. So the uh, uh, so the wave number ex illustrates how the amplitude will decay. So e power i k x if let us say e power i k real plus i times k imaginary times x. So, it will be e power i k real times x plus e power minus. So, this is the propagating part. So, that this multiplied by uh, and this is the uh, growth or decay. So, this is the decay part attenuate. This is probably a good time to answer the question that you asked yesterday. You asked two questions. One was what happens when you have uh, a 
what is the question exactly about the complex? Yeah, so if you have uh, a real omega, so okay, let me rephrase the question so that it comes in the video. So you, you, we, when we looked at the attenuation of sound in a duct, we said that there is a loudspeaker and it is producing sound and we, fa uh, and we said the experiment is running in kind of steady state. So we have a real omega and then we had a complex wave number and the question was whether omega over uh, the uh, omega over c is k, omega is real, c is, c has to turn out to be complex for get, getting k to be uh, uh, complex. So uh, uh, this is indeed right, but uh, what we have to remember is that uh, the way we solved it, it is not a eigenvalue problem. Uh, we imposed the omega, that means the impedance of the loudspeaker has to match the duct and so on, which we did not take into account. So whatever energy is absorbed by the duct is being given, that is assumption is made implicitly. So uh, as opposed to eigenvalue problem where we actually prescribe conditions at the boundary and then we solve for uh, solve for the frequency and the wave number. So uh, the relation between omega and k that is the dispersion relationship. So an eigenvalue problem you will get a dispersion relationship and there you can say omega over c equal to k or something like that and omega can be complex k will also be complex but c will have to be a real propagating speed uh, because that is what it is. Now here uh, if you um, say I will say let me recast as k naught into 1 plus i alpha right. So I will get c equal to omega by k naught into 1 plus i alpha which can be perhaps written as so I mean this c is a complex number but this is just a definition I mean it is not really the dispersion relationship we would not get this as the dispersion relationship because there is no dispersion relationship because it is not the eigenvalue problem. Uh, so this can be called a complex speed and uh, people many times call it complex speed of sound but we have to understand that it is just uh, a definition. So uh, omega over uh, uh, I mean the c which is square root of gamma rt that is indeed the speed of the wave which is happening which is going which comes out as uh, omega or k naught but the balance is just a way of representing attenuation. But if you are solving a eigenvalue problem we can actually uh, we will solve in the coming classes when there is a flame and the flame drives or damps and then you will get a relationship between omega k and c and those would be like a dispersion proper dispersion relationship. That clear? And the uh, other question um, was when you have a, a, a mean velocity, would you get same <coughs> equation? So I worked out the example quickly just two minutes before coming uh, here and I did not get any answer which is fancy. So if you uh, look at, uh, so if you uh, let us say we, uh, we are, so let us say there is a mean flow but if you travel we are considering a constant mean flow. So there is no variation in u bar or there is no uh, uh, non-uniform base flow, it is just a constant base flow. And the question is can you translate the coordinate system and move with the base flow and then you should have the uh, regular wave equation, we should be able to translate back and get the uh, equation uh, uh, with the uh, u bar and so on. So what one would do is dou rho prime by dou t plus rho bar dou u prime by dou x equal to 0. So this is the continuity equation and I will replace rho prime equal to p prime over c square, uh, I will say. Now, um, so this is the uh, modified continuity equation and uh, momentum equation was dou u prime by dou t plus 1 over rho bar uh, rho p prime by dou x equal to 0. Now uh, if you want to see the, um, so now, now you are, if there is a mean flow or not the equation does not distinguish except that 
even if there is a mean flow then you have to be traveling at the uh, speed of the mean flow that is that, that, where the equation is written. Uh, now if you now get off the frame of reference and sit in the lab and view it from a laboratory frame of reference and imagine there is a mean flow then all you have to do is to replace uh, this term dou by dou t we will have to uh, replace with uh, d by dt which is dou by dou t plus u bar dou by dou x. So I will get two equations which are 1 over c square dp prime by dt plus rho bar du prime by dou x equal to 0 and the other equation would be uh, du prime over uh, dt plus 1 over rho bar dou p prime by dou x equal to 0. So now we can uh, uh, do, do, uh, dou by dou x here and d by dt here and you will get uh, equation which is uh, of the form uh, uh, let us do it d by dt and this is dou by dou x so need some space. other equation will give so this uh, op this means that you have to operate d by dt first and then dou by dou x i don't know how to write it I hope the symbol is okay or should I write D and do uh, uh, yeah I think this is probably more appropriate uh, and you, you can actually commute the uh, derivatives you can check it and therefore you can get uh, the equation as uh, yeah, if you multiply this so you will get 1 over c square t square t prime by t t squared equal to and now if you uh, evaluate this expression as uh, dou by dou t plus u bar dou by dou x acting again on the same thing and check you should get uh, the wave equation in terms of partial derivatives and I did not get any fancy things as you are saying okay. so I will stop here with this you can check it and get back to me right. Uh, just take the full algebra I am quite keen on clarifying this okay. Any other questions on the old topics okay so if there are no Nobel Prize winning questions we will move on to uh, uh, acoustic fields and cylinders. So having got an idea about acoustic field in a box and we saw what solutions can propagate and not propagate now uh, we can go back to our Bessel functions and so on and see what kind of modes can be set up in a uh, circular duct and uh, usually in engineering applications uh, one finds um, circular pipes more often if you go to a lab or any construction you always find uh, in general in mechanical engineering kind of places you find circular pipes often of course in um, rooms are always like a box I mean you do not have circular rooms yet uh, so I guess both are important. So we look at the um, solution of uh, we will write the wave equation in cylindrical coordinates and now uh, we can also do all this in spherical coordinates but I am not going to spend too much time on this topic I will uh, just wrap up, wrap up with this. So we will look at um, solution to wave equation in general cylindrical coordinates and this time we will keep all this uh, <coughs> angular dependence and so on. <coughs> so 
So, we are writing the wave equation there are no mean quantities separately dealing with we are dealing with and so on. So, I will take the liberty to drop the primes if that is okay with you uh, p actually means p prime here okay. Now we can do, so this is the uh, wave equation in cylindrical uh, coordinates uh, or what is called cylindrical polar and we can do separation of variables. So we can say phi equal to r of r times z of z times. So, if you do this and work out the algebra, I will write the final result. So, if you work out the algebra that is you take um, your uh, pressure as uh, function of r times function of z times function of phi times function of time and substitute it into uh, this relation and then we divide through o by r z psi t then you get something of this form. So, this uh, this term is dependent on r and phi and you have this term which is dependent on z and this is on um, time. So, if you have a function of time being equal, equal to function of z which is a space coordinate this should be equal to uh, uh, both of them should be constant and if these two things are constant uh, the uh, function which is dependent on r and phi should also be a constant. So, that is the logic here. So, we can uh, then write this as 1 over c square d square t over d t square equal to minus k squared and the minus sign is just to make things appear pretty and you have the first term 1 over r I should have So, we will have this constant and they are not independent we, we can write a relation between them. So, k r square plus k z square equal to k square. So, this is like a constraint or compatibility relation. <coughs> so, if you expand this thing out we can write r square d square r by d r square plus r over
So you multiply this through by r squared and then so r squared comes here, this goes away from the denominator, r squared comes here, then you bring this term on the right hand side to the left side and take this term to the right side. So now you have a function of r being equal to function of p and therefore both should be uh, constants. So we will call this constant as minus m square. So now we have separated out uh, PDEs to uh, ordinary differential equations for each of this r, z, psi and t. Hope this is uh, straightforward enough. <coughs> So we can um, write this as two equations actually. So one uh, and the other one is. So we have two equations which are actually coupled. So you have uh, the psi which is the angular dependence, you have a differential equation for, for that and you have to note that it is the same m that is appearing here and what is this equation? You have seen it. Huh? Where? This is, so here there is this minus right no i i want to call it minus m huh ah yeah no this is okay this should be okay thank you yeah Again, these are you can write plus m or minus m. It's just to make the things look nice and so. <coughs> so, what is this differential equation? What is this differential equation? Bessel equation of order m. And uh, we uh, <coughs> for m equal to zero, that means we, uh, if you put m equal to zero, this will become psi is independent of v. Um, <coughs> we can get that kind of relation. Uh, so we uh, we we looked at it last class, right? There, or class before last? <coughs> and uh, yeah, last class. So this is a more general version where you can have angular dependence and there many problems in which uh, there could be angular dependence. So I just leave it there. Uh, I will uh, only look at the radial variation and I will. Uh, so that um, so you will get a solution of this form when m is an integer and if m is a non integer what happens so, right. so this is for m is 
integer and when m is non integer what is the solution yeah j of m k r r plus j of minus m k r r when m is non integer now <coughs> the reason we can write a solution in terms of j of m and j of minus m is because j of m and j of minus m are independent uh, in independent functions <coughs> when m is non integer but when is m, m is integer <coughs> j m and j minus m are linearly dependent <coughs> so then we have to look for an alternate solution which is what is the neumann function which we get and i give you references in last class about these things if you don't look at them and study them they will appear as beautiful pictures and uh, not as anything which is meaningful so i urge you to go and um, uh, look at those uh, that nice NPTEL video on Bessel functions and so on or any book or Wikipedia whatever yeah. without it I think this will not make any sense. So a, a, a general solution is product of uh, this we know R of R and uh, we know the solution to this psi would be e power and um, for yeah for z we can get e power i k z plus e power minus k is i, I k z and you can multiply all of them and you can get the general solution right So, Z is the generalized cylinder function which can be written as uh, J or y, uh, uh, y or J, uh, J of M and J of minus M or you can also write in terms of Hankel which is J plus I Y and J minus I Y uh, all can be represented by this general cylinder functions that is Z and the superscript denotes the first kind, second kind. So, you always have to have two solutions right and m denotes the order. <coughs> so, we multiply this by multiply by t e power a m phi plus f e power n. and we have to also remember that this m here is coupled with this m here So times e power i omega t. Thanks. And it's enough to keep e power i omega t um, or e power minus i omega t. Just get the same thing. Thank you. Can I erase this stuff you have written?
So, next we will study sound propagation in circular tubes. Acoustic fields. And we will look at a rigid wall tube. Now, in a tube, if you look at the solution and we have this radial dependency here, and what would be the value of B? Can we guess the value of B? 0. Why? Yeah. So, uh, at r equal to 0, the value of y is minus infinity. So, he has probably done the homework. No, I think he is an expert in Bessel function. I learned from him earlier. Uh, so, for those of you who are not experts, you should do the homework and figure out how the y and j likes. Uh, so, all y's go to minus infinity when r equal to 0. So, if you have if your domain includes r equal to 0, you can peacefully drop b, b will be 0. If your domain does not include r equal to 0, that is if you are talking about annulus and so on, like annular combustion chamber, which you are probably studying, then we have to uh, keep b. Okay. So, that is clear. So, now we can safely, if you have a circular tube, we can just safely say that our expression is j m. What is the value of j naught at r equal to 0? And what is uh, j 1, j 2, j 3? 0. j 2? J naught, he said, is one. Fine. Yeah, all the J's are zero except. Yeah. So for uh, so if if you have a circular tube, it is enough to keep this solution. And in summary, we can drop this because y of 0 goes to minus infinity, which should imply b equal to 0. <coughs> so, our p prime will go like j of k r. And so, we need the velocity, velocity 0 if you have a rigid wall. So, velocity will go like d by dr. So, d by dr of j m of k r at r equal to capital R, where the tube is boundary is, is k r So, the roots of this equation will give the values of k r r. Uh, and uh, in in sin and cos, you have simple relation. Like if sin uh, x is zero, then x can be uh, uh, zero pi, two pi, three pi, and so on. But we learned that Bessel function has a very important characteristics which about the roots. What does it? Yeah, the roots of the Bessel function are not evenly spaced. So it's a big um, subject by itself. To a lot of people do PhDs on roots of Bessel functions and so on. Uh, we will not do a PhD, but we look at uh, uh, first roots of this this quantity. Uh, so, uh, of course, th there are interesting relationship between J m and J m primes. For example, if you have m is zero. J naught prime is it goes like J 1 and then for higher ones there are recurrence relationship in terms of like uh, uh, the <laughs> primes can be written in terms of other J's, but it is not as simple as sin and cos except in the case of J naught, uh, uh, but handbooks are available, tables are available and the computer math lab and so on gives the roots very peacefully. So, let us look at a table where m is the order here. 
and uh, 0, 1, 2, 3 we will look at and we will look at the first root which is nu equal to 0, nu equal to 1 equal to 2 nu equal to 3. So, you have a 0 here, but here So, this is the uh, very first one that is coming that is corresponding to m equal to 1 the 0 uh, nu equal to 0. So, uh, uh, of course, why the roots are this way and a lot of stuff is available, but we can get this from a handbook uh, and uh, the interesting thing is that uh, this, this correspond to the uh, lowest frequency that can be set up with the radial mode and you, you can have frequencies that are only higher than that anything lower than that would not propagate. So, So, you have to have a k which is more than what the kr gives and what is the value of kr. So, sorry, yeah sorry fantastic. Um, so, k can be written as 2 pi f over c r equal to We will call this root as gamma. So, so you this is the cutoff frequency, the uh, uh, frequency you established has to be higher than this for the kz to come real, otherwise, you will not be able to get a uh, propagating solution. And so, uh, this would from what we um, but from this 1.84 will correspond to or this will correspond to d which is 2 r equal to 0.584 lambda which is okay of the order of lambda over 2. So, you have to have frequencies which are higher than what you get from this formula to be able to establish radial mode in a duct. Anything lower would only be there locally and you will not propagate or the uh, wavelengths have to be uh, uh, your should be shorter than uh, the d divided by 0 0.584 uh, or we can think the other way for a given wavelength the duct diameter has to be like half the wavelength approximately and uh, anything below you will not be able to set up this uh, radial modes you will only be able to have plane waves. So, the same way we saw in the case of the box except there it was simple m pi by uh, b and n pi over h where here we need to have this table or computer program and so on. So, I am going to uh, stop my discussion about multidimensional acoustic field with this but in reality um, <coughs> there is a lot more to study I think annular combustors have these modes which are uh, annular modes and they are 
uh, having this radial kind of stuff as well as they are rotating and, and so on, but we will not uh, uh, speak much about this in this class. We will concern with purely uh, axial waves, but I just wanted to give an introduction to this kind of topic. So, I will stop here uh, with my teaching on acoustics and in next class we will, uh, so we have finished the first half of the class, first, first half of the course which I said was dealing with propagation of uh, sound. So, just to uh, recapture whatever went through half the semester, we derived equations of fluid mechanics, well one dimensional and then uh, you can write 3D if you want. But the important thing was that the continuity equation is not rho a v equal to constant, but dou rho by dou t plus del dot rho v equal to 0 and it is really important that we keep the terms d by dt in both continuity energy and moment. And then we talked about linearizing and this was purely because we wanted to keep things simple because linear equations can be solved and we did manage to solve some of them, not all. For example, everything did not get, did not give out solutions of the form f of x plus c t and so on, only some uh, with the temperature gradient or with the cylindrical coordinates we did not have a general solution, right. <coughs> so, we uh, linearized, we got traveling wave solutions, we got standing wave solutions, we found the speed of the propagation which came out to be square root of dou p by dou rho at constant entropy. And then we talked about different kind of boundary conditions, closed and open ends and then uh, impedance boundary conditions. And then we uh, talked about how to determine impedance in a practical experiment. We said that it is easy to see the solution and then get the boundary condition, that is what you do in reality. And then uh, we, uh, so we, uh, there we set up a real frequency and looked at the standing wave structure, got the impedance, but then we were able to translate it to the eigenvalue problem uh, with those that end and you are able to get the real and imaginary part of the frequency, real part is periodic uh, solution, correspond to periodic solution, the imaginary part corresponds to exponential growth or decay. So, we linked admittance to the energy flow and that we linked to the growth or decay because if energy is coming in uh, from the boundaries, your uh, acoustic energy in the duct will grow, if the energy is going out, you, your energy will decay. And then um, we looked at sound propagation through non-uniform temperature, regions of non-uniform temperature, then attenuated waves uh, and, and so on. And then uh, lastly we looked at, uh, or we also looked at combination when there is temperature gradient and when there is damping. And then we looked very quickly at uh, multidimensional acoustic field, uh, that is uh, you have like a, a acoustic field in a box and acoustic field in a tube. So, of course, this is a big subject and uh, the three semester classes on acoustics, but I have crashed everything into uh, two months or something like that. Uh, that the idea is that the second half of the class which will start from tomorrow, we will speak about thermoacoustic instability or the combustion instability and this is more like a background towards that. Uh, so, we in summary, we studied propagation of sound and we are going to look at generation of sound. Okay. And why it should have been the other way, but propagation is much easier to study compared to the generation. At least propagation is a well established subject. Thank you.